In this video, we're going to learn about the arithmetic operators in Python. So the arithmetic operators allow us to perform standard mathematical operations, such as addition and subtraction. Let's create a variable a, and we'll assign the value 5 to it. And we'll create a variable b, and we'll assign the value 2 to it. And we'll practice using the arithmetic operators with these variables. We'll print out the values of a and b to remind ourselves what those are. So we'll have print a is equal to a, and print b is equal to, and then b. And we'll also print out a blank line here. So if we want to calculate the sum of a and b, we could use the addition arithmetic operator. We could have sum underscore result is equal to a plus b. So the plus symbol is the addition operator. It's going to add together a and b. We call these the operands. The value that's produced is going to be stored into sum result because of this assignment operator here. We could then print out sum result. So we could have print a plus b is equal to, and then we'll output sum result. So we can save this and then run our program. And we get that a plus b is equal to seven. And that makes sense because a is five and b is two. We don't need to use variables as operands. Anything that evaluates to a number will be okay. So for example, we could have 10 here instead. And this will also work. We would get a plus 10, which should give us 15. And it does. We also don't need to store the result of the addition operation into a variable in order to use it. So for example, we could just have a plus b directly here. And this here is an expression, a plus b. It's going to be evaluated to the result of a plus b and that value will be passed as an argument to print. So we could save this and run our program, and this will also work. We'll get a plus b is equal to seven. Now the subtraction operator looks like this. We could have print a minus b. So a minus b will subtract b from a. So if we save this and run our program, we'll get three. And that makes sense because five minus two is three. The multiplication operator looks like this. We'll have print a star b. So a star b is multiplication. This will multiply a by b. So we could save this and run our program and we'll get 10 because five times two is 10. There's also a power operator we could use to find a to the power of b. So we could have print a to the power of b is a star star b. So a star star b will give us 5 to the power of 2. In other words, 5 squared. So we could save this and run our program. And we get a to the power of b is 25. And that makes sense because 5 to the power of 2 is 5 times 5, which is 25. There's also a division operator. So we could have print and a slash b will give us a divided by b. So a slash b will divide a by b. So we could save this and try our program out and we'll get 2.5 and that makes sense because five divided by two is 2.5. Sometimes we would like to calculate the remainder of a division operation. So for example, with five divided by two, we could say that two goes into five two times, but that we have one remainder. We can use the modulus operator to find the remainder of a division operation. So we could have print a percent b is equal to. So a percent b will give us the remainder of a divided by b. And we call percent the modulus operator. So we could save this and run our program. And we'll get that a modulus b is 1, which makes sense because 5 divided by 2 is going to be 2 remainder 1. There's also a type of division called floor division. Floor division will round the result down to the nearest integer. So we could have here print a slash slash b. This will perform floor division. So a slash slash b will perform floor division and the result will be rounded down to the nearest integer. So we could save this and run it. And now we'll get that a floor division b is 2. And that makes sense because 2.5 rounded down to the nearest integer is 2. 
it's important to understand that the operation will round down to the next lowest integer. So with 2.5, for example, normally, if we were to just round 2.5, it would round up to 3. But with floor division, it's going to round down to the next lowest integer. So we get 2. Let's see what happens if we use floor division with negative b. In other words, 5 divided by negative 2. So we'll have print a floor division negative b is equal to, and we'll have a slash slash negative b. So if we save this and run our program, we'll get negative 3. And that might seem a bit odd. We might expect to get back negative 2 for 5 divided by negative 2, given that 5 divided by 2 gave us 2. But floor division does not round towards 0. It rounds down to the next lowest integer. And so if 5 divided by negative 2 results in negative 2.5, the next lowest integer is actually negative 3. Negative 2 would actually be the next highest integer. So that's why we get that behavior. And I point that out because it can sometimes confuse people. We call this minus symbol here the negation operator because it will give us the negation of this value here. We also say that it is a unary operator because the operator only has a single operand instead of two, like these operators here. Now notably, for each of these arithmetic operators, there is an associated short form assignment operator that will perform the arithmetic operation and then also perform an assignment. So for example, if we have c is equal to four and d is equal to five, we could print out c and d. So we'll have print and then c before is equal to, and then we'll put c and print d before is equal to, and then we'll put d. Here, we could have c plus equals d. This here is a short form for c is equal to c plus d. Both of these statements will do the same thing. The top statement is simply a short form for this bottom statement here. So we could have put c after. We'll have print c after is equal to, and then we'll output c. And we can save this and run our program and we'll get that c after is nine, and that makes sense because four plus five is nine, and that result is assigned back to c. So an equivalent short form assignment operator exists for each arithmetic operator. So for example, we could have c times equals d. This will take c, multiply it by d, and store the result back into c. And if we save this and run our program, this time we'll get 20, because four times five is 20. Another thing we should be aware of is that operators are applied with a precedence. So for example, if we had result is equal to five times two plus eight, and then here we print out result. So we have result is equal to, and we'll output result. If we save this and run it, we'll get the result is 18. And that's because the multiplication operator is going to occur before the addition operator, we're going to get that five times two is 10, and then add 10 to eight to get 18. So operators in Python are going to be applied with a specific precedence. We can use brackets to enforce a desired precedence. So for example, if we wanted this addition operator to happen first, we could put brackets around two plus eight here. This would force two plus eight to occur before multiplying the result by five. So if we save this, and run it, we'll get 50, because two plus eight is going to occur first, and that will give us 10. And 10 multiplied by five will give us 50. So it's important for us to be aware that these arithmetic operators will occur with a certain precedence. And this is how we can use the arithmetic operators in Python. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.